Hello everyone, my name is John and I want to welcome you back to Jam Packed. You know, I think we need to jump right into something that I know all of you absolutely love. You got it, it's worship time. Guess what, Joey is here today and I know he is looking forward to leading you in a couple of songs. Why don't you stand up right where you are and let's get started.
Kids, that was awesome. You know, God loves it so very much when we worship Him and we praise Him for who He is. Hey, who out there remembers our theme for this month? Anybody? Yeah, you got it. Friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. Now, our memory verse this month really shows us what it means to be a good friend. Remember, our verse is Proverbs 17:17, 17, 17, and it says this. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Hey, why don't you say it along with me? Are you all ready? Here we go. You repeat after me. A friend loves at all times. Good job. And they are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. Now we should love at all times. We should always be there to help. And we should look for others who will do the same things for us. That's what makes a good friend. Hey, do you know what else friends do? They encourage one another. Our true Bible story this week really shows us what it means to encourage our friends. Today, we're going to go to the books of 1 Kings and 2 Kings as we take a look at the friendship between Elijah and Elisha. Check it out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, for many years, God's people were ruled by kings who refused to listen to God. So God sent prophets to speak his words. One was a man named Elijah. I serve the Lord. Elijah did amazing things through God's power, like calling for rain after three years of drought and uh, bringing a dead boy back to life. But being a prophet was a lonely, difficult life. After the evil queen Jezebel threatened his life, Elijah fled to Mount Horeb. God. I've been committed to you, but the people have turned their backs on me. I am the only prophet left. God already had an answer to Elijah's pleas. A friend. Go back the way you came. Anoint Elisha from Abel Meholah as the next prophet after you. So Elijah tightened his belt and set out along the road. When he finally reached the town, he noticed several young men plowing with a dozen pair of oxen. And in the very last field, he noticed one of the young men struggling to keep his oxen in line. Get up there, Ham. Move along, Burger. God, is that Elisha? He's just a small town kid. What does he have? Does he have what it takes to be a prophet? But God had chosen Elisha, so Elijah tramped through the muddy field to greet the young man. Elisha. Elisha blinked in surprise when he saw the prophet. Whoa, Burger. Elijah marched right up to Elisha and threw his very own cloak over the young man's shoulders. It was a sign that God had chosen Elisha to be Elijah's assistant. 
Me? You're choosing me? Elijah turned and walked away. Elisha dropped the reins and ran after. Wait, just let me say goodbye to my family. Then I'll come with you. Go right ahead. I'm not making you do anything. Yes, sir. Right then and there, Elisha broke apart his plow and used the wooden pieces to start a fire. He cooked a meal and called all his family and friends over to share it with him. I'm leaving to travel with Elijah. Goodbye, everyone. Then Elisha set out on the road beside Elijah. I don't really know how to be a prophet or, or even a prophet's assistant. That's okay. You'll learn. So over the years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere as a close companion and good friend, and he watched and listened intently as Elijah spoke God's words to powerful kings and, and did incredible things. One day, Elisha and Elijah left the town of Gilgal on the way to Bethel, and they both knew that God was about to do something very breathtaking. God was going to take Elijah up to heaven. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Elisha wasn't about to leave his friend to go it alone. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. At Bethel, the same thing happened. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. It happened once again in Jericho. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan River. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. You do realize you're repeating yourself. Together, Elisha and Elijah reached the banks of the Jordan River. The waters flowed dark and deep. Elijah removed his coat and rolled it up. And then he struck the river. Immediately, the waters parted to the right and left. Elisha and Elijah walked across the river on dry ground. They reached the opposite bank. Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Elisha didn't want to lose his friend and mentor, Elijah, but he'd learned many things in the last few years. Please, give me a double share of the spirit God has given you. Only the Lord can do that. But if you see me when I'm taken away, that means you will receive what you've asked for. Elisha nodded, and the two men walked on in silence. Suddenly, a wild wind whipped up, and a chariot and horses appeared blazing with fire. Elijah. The flaming chariot flew down right between the two men. It caught up Elijah and carried him up to heaven, driven by a strong wind. Elijah, you are like a father to me. Elisha stared into the sky until the last breath of wind and the final hint of flame were gone. Then in great sorrow, he tore his own clothes. My best friend is gone. Glancing down at the ground, he saw Elijah's coat. Carefully, he picked it up. I wonder. Elisha hurried back to the bank of the Jordan River. Again, the water flowed hard and fast. On the opposite bank, a group of prophets from Jericho watched. Look, there's Elisha, but where's Elijah? Across the river, Elisha twisted up Elijah's coat. He called out in a loud voice. Where is the power of the Lord? Where is the power of the God of Elijah? Then Elisha struck the water just as Elijah had done. And just like what happened before, the waters parted to the right and left. The prophets from Jericho stared in amazement as Elisha crossed the river on dry land. The spirit God gave to Elijah has been given to Elisha. It was true. Elisha had been faithful to follow and learn from Elijah for many years, and now God's spirit was with Elisha just as it had been with his friend. Welcome back, kids. In our Bible story today, we see that friends encourage one another. Elijah had been so lonely, and then God brought Elisha into his life. The two friends encouraged each other as they did the things that God had asked them to do. That's what good friends do. What do you think that might look like for us? How can we encourage our friends like Elijah and Elisha did? Maybe your friend is nervous about something hard, like a big test at school or a tryout for a sport or prefer performing at a dance recital. Tell them that you know they can do it and maybe even help them practice. 
If your friend is sad, you can sit with them and just listen, or maybe make a card to cheer them up. We all go through things that are difficult, kids. It means everything to know that your friend is there to cheer you on. Remember, God can help you be an encourager with your friends. Jesus promised that God would send a helper, his Holy Spirit. When we believe and put our faith in Jesus, we have his spirit living inside of us. God's spirit helps us know that we can encourage other people too. With God's help, we can find lots of great ways to encourage our friends. Hey, let's pray and ask God right now to help us with that. Let's ask him to help us be a good encourager to our friends. Sound good? Let me pray for us. Dear God, we thank you so very much for loving us, for coming down for us, for dying for us, for coming back to show us that uh, you really have saved us, God. And we know that through that, and when we believe that, you give us your Holy Spirit to live inside of us and to give us the ability to encourage others. So God, when things are hard or we're sad or we see someone else sad, Lord, we just pray that we look to you, that you're going to give us the words to not only encourage ourselves, but to take those and encourage others also. So Lord, we love you and we thank you for always being with us and always giving us what we need and doing what's best for us. We praise you in your name. Amen. All right, kids, I want to encourage all of you to go out and encourage your friends this week. If you haven't been able to see them, give them a phone call, maybe connect on Zoom or go meet outside somewhere, but go encourage your friends, remind them how special they are, how much you love them, and most important, tell them God loves them too, okay? Because that's the most encouraging thing. And guess what, kids? He loves all of you also. All right, I pray you all have a blessed week and I will see you next week on Jam Packed Online. Bye for now.